It's life or death with me now. But you know, there's no turning back now. This is what makes me. This is what I am. Feel me? Feel me? Let's go. You can hate me now. QB. But I won't stop now. Real niggas. Cause I can't stop now. Brave hearts. You can hate me now. It's an incredible video of Jenna zooming her camera across a lake at a distance of over 30 miles. And as you can clearly see right here, you can see almost the entirety of the city with just a bit of the street obscured from view. And then she shows a shot at the end of the video of the city skyline and then a screenshot from her video. And they look pretty damn close. It's almost identical. What are you fucking nuts? <laughs> Oh, Smarty Marty, the Pied Piper leads. I just can't believe that you're this ignorant, this dumb. I just find it hard to believe. I don't know if you're just, you know, a liar or just dumb. Seriously. Because almost identical is like saying it's kind of like or sort of in a way. Which really means not even close. So the truth is, Marty, that those two pictures are not almost identical. They are nowhere near identical. So only an ignorant, novice, amateur would assume that those are the same. So let's zoom in and let's find out the true perspective and get into the real truth of the subject. So we will zoom in from 8,000 to just 30 miles on the Earth's surface, which is why we only see a few hundred feet of droppage in just that 30 miles. And of course, the horizon line is the tangent point, or the height of the spinning ball Marty leads. So when you're on one end of the spherical ball, your view is obstructed from the 30 miles away tower of the Taurus Bowl because, why? Because of the horizon bulge, the tangent point of the sphere, Marty leads. Mr. Pied Piper, you didn't show the truth of the hundreds of feet that is missing from the image. So you said just a bit of the street is obscured from the view? What? Who, who are you? Who are you trying to fool? You, you make me sick. That you sit here and spew ignorance and don't even do real research and figure out that those two pictures are nowhere near the truth. You're talking hundreds of feet. Look how huge the Rogers Center is. I mean, it's gigantic. Little people standing on the surface right there, on the ground. That's not even water level. The water level's below that. <laughs> There's what, 20, 30, 40 feet, who knows? You'd have to go find out of, of land below the actual building as well, which even adds m more feet because the, the building itself is 280 something feet tall. You can only see the tip of it, my son, my Pied Piper liar. Her video sh clearly shows that it's cut off and all you can see is the, the roof, the, the half of the roof is sticking there, sticking up. <laughs> Freaking, you can see almost all of it. Fucking liar. And as you can clearly see right here, you can see almost the entirety of the city with just a bit of the street obscured from view. What are you fucking nuts? <laughs> 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 
Aloha everyone, this is Truth Erisi, House of Wisdom, and this is a follow-up video from the video I produced uh, about the Toronto Zoom on Flat Earth, which was complete bullshit, and I showed how there was a drop without question, but everyone assumed that I meant a total Earth drop from eye level, which is not what I was talking about. We were just talking about from the horizon. So, doesn't matter uh, where the horizon line is, which I'm gonna explain here in a second, I'll show you the perspective viewpoint because you can add up the droppage on various calculations of curvature of the Earth and you're gonna be confused and so is everybody else. So I'm gonna explain it to you so that you understand completely. And talking about the reflecting or the refraction and superior mirages is irrelevant because I will show you in just a minute why. So let's start from the beginning and explain to you that if you're at the North Pole on the Earth and anywhere on a sphere, doesn't matter, you are standing vertical to that spherical plane that you're standing on. And if you were to travel one-fourth of the way around the world, which is 25,000 miles, so one-fourth would be 6,250 miles, you would actually only drop down 4,000 miles, which is the Earth radius. So I want to explain it this way to you, that most people are looking at the tangent line of the horizon line and their viewable perspective from their eye level down to and past the horizon line. So, which is, I will call side B, and side A is the side that is closest to you, and beyond that horizon line, we will call side B. So most everyone is using this line of sight as the eye level, which is not true whatsoever. So, the true level of the person standing at spot A 
versus the true level ground of spot B, or let's say the Toronto Tower in this diagram. So the true horizontal eye level of one spot on a sphere is completely different, even one foot away to a degree, versus even 30 miles or 500 miles for 1,000 miles away. Your arc degree angle changes constantly, no matter where you are on the Earth, when you're on a sphere. So the green lines represent the true horizontal or eye level plane. And remember, this is not to scale by no means, just showing the concept. And when you notice the two different horizontal eye level planes of the two objects of A and B, you'll notice how drastic they have changed. The angles have changed. So this is all about human eye perspective, your viewable perspective viewpoint within our world or here on Earth. So this is why the Illuminati has the enlightenment of the illusion of perspective. And of course, I have shown how they use this perspective viewpoint as their symbolism as well as their Hollywood films. So understanding the spherical world and understanding the Earth is not flat all has to do with understanding perspective. The perspective of eye level is what we will be discussing because the perfect 90 degree angle, which is level and horizontal, is what we will be talking about. It's used in art, for example, or in your room where it's the eye level where we hang a picture in a house or a room. So this is also known as the Fibonacci sequence or the Fibonacci code. So you'll notice the line of sight in any given picture is about three-fifths the way up. So you will notice this eye level within any given image. And by the way, notice that the torus of the Toronto Tower is designed according to the Fibonacci sequence. So the level perspective or horizontal viewpoint perspective of eye level or the 90 degree angle to the surface that you're standing on is the same whether you're in the air or if you're on the ground. Which is why when you're in an airplane, you look down at the horizon level, the ground below you the, that you rose from, just like when you go to the beach and you are looking down at the horizon. It is not eye level that you're looking out at because horizon, the horizon line is below the 90 degree of eye level as to the equal horizontal plane that you're standing on. So the true eye level is on the horizontal plane at a 90 degree angle directly out in front of your eyes, looking forward out into the sky actually, above the horizon line. So although it feels like you're on a flat plane, you're actually on top of a large, gigantic, spinning ball earth, a spherical earth. And that's why no matter where you are, as you stand vertical on a spherical surface, you will be looking down at everything you see. So that's why even if you are sitting on the beach, you still have to look downward at the ocean and the horizon line. So the drop in the Earth's curvature and the eye level viewpoint of the perspective viewpoint of the viewer is going to be significant over distance. So the greater the distance, the greater the drop and the greater that that area represents. So this is why the people are confused about the Toronto Zoom. If you notice in the beginning, they show you the true eye level above the surface of the ground and then they zoom in downward to the horizon line. 
So the truth is, the person is standing on the beach at eye level and then zooms downward just a few inches off the horizon line and we see the Toronto skyline. And you'll notice, not the reflection matters, but the fact that we are now looking downwards upon Toronto, the city. We are actually above the city, looking downwards upon it. So understanding this concept of being horizontal and truly level and eye level on a spherical plane is what the flat earthers do not want you, want you to understand whatsoever. So if they were to use their cameras properly and show you what's really going on, they would have a level, horizontal, eye-level view of the camera, zoom in, and you would see just blue skies. So they have to look downwards at the horizon line, and then they zoom in downwards at an angle. So now you know the truth and you understand it, that we are actually looking down upon the city of Toronto, which is why it's way below our eye level. And of course, this is impossible on a flat plane. So when you're at a city, it appears to be flat. But the truth is, it's actually curving around the sphere. And I will prove this once again by showing you how it's impossible on flat Earth. Because the viewpoint will always be the same on flat Earth just from a greater distance, but you'll have the same angle view of the original object that you're viewing because you're on a flat plane. So you're saying the Earth is flat, so let's go to Toronto and let's look at the city on the flat land that appears to be flat on the sphere. And if we stand in front of the Toronto Tower, we're six feet tall, and of course we would be looking directly up at the Toronto Tower because we're right at its base. So we're on the flat earth, right? And we're in front of the Toronto Tower, right? Okay, and we can even get on top of the Toronto Tower and look down at the spherical earth as you see. And back at the other location, you realize that they're both looking back at one another, downwards at each other. So we are certain that we are on a flat plane, right? looking down at the horizon and looking down on Toronto. But we were just in Toronto and we were looking up at the tower. So how could it be both? How could you be on a flat plane and be below the tower at one point and then 30 miles away be literally thousands of feet above it looking down upon it? It's impossible on a flat plane. And now you know the truth, and now you have knowledge, and know that there is no edge of the ledge. Peace, love, and wisdom. Aloha. Truth or see house of wisdom.